we have to wait and see what the numbers are coming very shortly, I think. But all the indications are that the government has completely lost control of our immigration system. And what they fail to do is build opportunities for local uh, workforce development and uh, skills and talent and career planning. And as a result of that, employers are having to reach for uh, bringing overseas uh, migrant labour into the country. And I think it, this is about balance. Of course, we need uh, immigration in our country, but we need to balance that against maximising opportunities for local people. But we've got 7 million people on NHS waiting lists, 2.5 million people on long-term sick. The government has slashed the further education budget. The apprenticeship levy, levy simply isn't working. So we need reforms in our labour market. And as those reforms kick in, you would see a decrease in uh, uh, inward migration. So give me figures. What, uh, what would be a, an upper cap for Labour? I'm actually not going to give you a specific number because if we look at things like the, you know, Putin's illegal invasion of Ukraine, the authoritarian crackdown in Hong Kong, we rightly as a country welcomed large numbers of Ukrainians and Hong Kongers as a result of that. If you put numbers in place, you're making yourself a hostage to fortune. So we don't think you need to have specific numbers, but what you need to have is a clear commitment to getting these numbers as they are down. They are too high, and they're too high for the reasons that I've just set out. So over what time frame, then, would you get those figures down? Well, I think a lot of it could happen rapidly. For example, we've put forward uh, a proposal to scrap the 20% uh, uh, discount that is you're able to do on shortage occupation lists, which in fact enables employers to undercut and to pay lower wages. What that does so is that means reduces... paying lower wages to people who are migrants. Yeah, and yeah. The, you, you then get a situation where the job becomes less attractive to local people, less pe local people apply for it, and you just um, perpetuate the problem and perpetuate the situation. So, so it's about... That. it's We're scrapping that. That was a policy that was announced uh, by Keir Starmer and Yvette Cooper yesterday, and it's absolutely the right thing to do, because we don't believe that two people doing the same job should be paid a different wage for doing it. And it's also about incentivising, making jobs more attractive, making career opportunities more attractive, is how you're going to get more local people applying for those jobs. Uh, and therefore, um, that would put um, downward pressure on the number of people coming into the country from overseas. What criteria would you use um, in order for people to, like Ukraine, Hong Kong, Syria, to come into the country? Because we had a gentleman sat there in the last hour representing the Sudanese community and he wants people from Sudan to be able to come into the UK? Well, the Refugee Convention is clear that if you're fleeing uh, violence, uh, persecution, uh, you should have the right to come and uh, Which claim you are in Sudan asylum. At the yes, uh, and that's right. Um, but of course, we have to balance that against the pressure on our own public services and resources. Um, what we first of all need to do is a government that's actually got a grip of the asylum backlog. 166,000 asylum seekers in that backlog, a number that has exploded over recent years. That's the biggest part of this problem because you've got people in limbo, not getting their claims reviewed. Those who are unsuccessful should be removed from the country. Those that are successful should be given leave to remain. That gives them the right to work and to get on with their lives, gets them out of hotels, which are costing £6 million a day. So. I think we need an, a, a, a policy on asylum which is based on hard graft and common sense and quiet diplomacy rather than all the headline chasing and government by gimmick that we see, we've seen over the last 13 years. So you're saying you would allow Sudanese in or not? There are many, many Sudanese who come here and claim asylum. I think Sudan, Sudan is one of the countries that has over 80% success rate in asylum okay. claims. But it, one of the key things here is to fast-track claims that are based on family reunion. So people who are in Sudan who have family in the UK, that's something that should be prioritised and decisions should be made more quickly. OK. Uh, what would uh, Keir Starmer do about stopping the boats? So um, our five-point plan is to scrap the unworkable, unethical uh, and unaffordable Rwanda plan and use that money that's being wasted now to boost up the National Crime Agency and to get much better working with Frontex and Interpol and Europol to crack down and break the model of the people smugglers. Clear the backlog, as I already set out. We would upgrade the seniority of caseworkers and decision makers uh, in the Home Office to get that backlog cleared. Which, of course, the government says they're doing. Well, there's very little evidence that that's working because they haven't recruited anything like the numbers uh, that they needed to recruit. Of course, the government's panicking, right? They've finally woken up to the fact that they've 
messed up in a big way on this whole issue. And it's too little too late. Uh, so we, of course, we, we will need in our first 100 days as a Labour government, this is going to be a top priority in terms of getting a grip on this backlog and working on it to get the right people in place. We also need a returns deal with the European Union. So I think most people would accept that the, the Tories... Some have... of those are in place, including Albania. Yeah, I mean, there's a broader need for a replacement to the Dublin Convention. So when Boris Johnson negotiated his botched Brexit deal, he failed to negotiate a successor to the Dublin Convention, which enabled us to return asylum seekers to uh, safe third countries, including to the European Union. We need to get that returns deal in place, but we know that that needs to be on the basis of a give-and-take arrangement between the United Kingdom and the EU, which should be based on us of getting safe and legal routes working. So that there's a quid pro quo between ourselves and the European Union. That's what a mature, grown-up relationship based on negotiation with the EU rather than antagonism and burning all our bridges, which is, I'm afraid, what the Conservatives have been doing for the last few years. Tina Turner fan? Massive Tina Turner fan. Favourite song? Um, I think What's Love's Got To Do With What's Love's Got To Do With It, I think, is an amazing song. And I, I, it's such tragic news about what's happened. I, I've been sort of singing Tina Turner songs in my head all morning, even before I came on this show, Kay. Uh, OK, Mari was sat there in the last hour and she sang What's Love Got To Do With It. I'm not going to be doing that because I don't think that will be a vote winner. <laughs> I I've, I've, been, I've done karaoke few with, with a few of my colleagues. If you got them in here and asked them, they say, yeah. no, I don't think Kinnock should be doing any singing this Yeah, morning. a bit like me. Couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. It's good <laughs> yeah. to see you as always. Thank you. Uh, regards to your parents. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.